Hi guys, so this is PAG 8.1, which is an investigation into the water potential of a potato. Um, so I have a potato and by putting that in different concentrations of sucrose solution, um, we can determine the water potential of this potato. So remember with osmosis that water will move from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential across a partially permeable membrane. The first step is to make a serial dilution to have our different concentrations of sucrose solution. So I'm starting with two sucrose solutions. I have one mole per decimeter cubed and I have 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed. It's the 0.8 mole per decimeter cubed sucrose solution that I'm going to use to make my cereal dilution. So I need to end up with 0.4, 0.2 and 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed of sucrose solution. Then I already have my one mole per decimeter cubed solution and I will need some water as well, just some distilled water. I have a diagram to help. This is the diagram. So the total volume of sucrose solution that we're going to want for our 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed sucrose solutions is 40 centimetres cubed. I need to label my beakers before I begin. So we have... <laughs> Now the diagram suggests that in each of these three beakers, we should start off with 20 centimetres cubed of distilled water. So I'll pop that in first. Okay, next I'm going to pour 20 centimetres cubed of our 0.8 mole per decimeter cubed sucrose solution into our 0.4 beaker. And now I'll do the same, pour 20 centimetres cubed of the 0.4 into our 0.2 beaker. And finally, 20 centimetres cubed of our 0.2 solution into our 0.1 beaker. And lastly, I'm going to pop um, 20 centimetres cubed of just distilled water in our last beaker which I've just labelled water or 0.0, .0 moles per decimeter cubed, no sucrose. Now I have to label each of the six boiling tubes to correspond with our six beakers here. Next, the goal is to pop the sucrose solutions into their corresponding boiling tube. I need 20 centimetres cubed of each solution in the boiling tubes. Um, I then need to get some potato and I will weigh the potato at the start, pop the potato into the boiling tubes for an hour, take them out and weigh them again at the end. So I'm going to just construct a quick results table to record the initial masses and the final masses. This is what my table looks like. I'm going to use a cork borer and a knife and a ruler to cut six potato chips that are 40 millimetres long or four centimetres long and carefully remove the skin from each side. What the method says to roll the potato cylinders in paper towel three times each and it's important we do the same for every one so that it's a fair test. They're rolled and dried, so next I need to weigh each of them on the balance and record their initial mass. Make sure you keep track of which potato is which. With initial masses recorded, I'm now going to pop a tube of potato into each boiling tube, um, start the stopwatch for an hour and I'll come back later. An hour has passed. Um, what I need to do now is take out each of the potato cylinders from their boiling tubes. Um, I'm going to put them in order so I remember which potato tube is which. Once I've done that, I need to dry them by rolling them in paper towel three times like I did at the start. Same for all of them. And then I will weigh them again, record their final masses, pop that into my results table, and then I can calculate percentage change.
All that remains now is steps 10 and 11. So step 10 is to calculate percentage change and record it in your table. And step 11 is plotting a graph. Um, after that, there are four extension questions at the end of the student sheet. So it's over to you.